I've had blood. I've had sweat. It's stressing me out because I'm not sure I'm going to finish on time. I'm just waiting for some tears. Welcome to episode two of Next Top Upside Learn. Hi, I'm Helen. I'm Peter. I'm Valerie. From Caracas, Venezuela. San Francisco, California. Mexico City. Johannesburg, South Africa. Detroit. What up, yo? And I am. And I'm. And I'm. I'm the Next Top Upside Learn. I'm your host, Angelina of Blueprint DIY, where I teach you how to remake your clothes to be just as unique as you are. It's time to go all over the world and share the stories, the journeys, and the upcycles of other creative people. But there's a twist. This is a competition where each contestant gets one week to complete the ultimate upcycle challenge. You'll vote for the winner, and this season is all about okay. denim. Let's do this. So make sure you subscribe and turn on all notifications so you don't miss an episode or the opportunity to vote to crown the next top upcycle. Last week's contestant was Jess. She actually works in the fashion industry, but she really got her upcycling journey started in 2020. She had the adventurous goal of making a trench coat out of old jeans and a blazer. She definitely had some bumps in the road. And I realized I messed up a little bit. But the outcome was divine, absolutely divine and streetwear ready. So if you didn't catch that episode, definitely go back and watch it after this one. Now for today's contestant, we're going all the way on the other side of the globe and we're talking to Tony. Hi, I'm Tony. I'm 20 years old from Johannesburg, South Africa, and I'm the next top upcycler. Both of my parents are Nigerian. I was born in Maseru, Lesotho, and then we moved to Bloemfontein in South Africa. In Bloemfontein, my brother was born. He's now 17 years old. Both of my parents are Nigerian. I really enjoy reading, sewing, knitting, baking, a lot of crafting sort of things. I'm studying engineering, mechanical and mechatronic engineering at the University of Cape Town. I first learned how to hand sew when I was part of um, Girl Scouts when I joined that when I was six years old, but I only got my first sewing machine when I was 17. And it was a secondhand Singer Monomy from 1973, but I, I really loved that machine. And I sort of had to teach myself how to use it. It was a lot of YouTube tutorials, um, a lot of asking people how do you do this or how do you do that? And just trial and error. I've always been upcycling. Before I knew what upcycling meant, I would just use old clothes that my family had and that nobody was wearing anymore. And now that I've become more environmentally conscious, I really see how much damage the fast fashion industry is doing. So I'm making a more conscious effort to um, get older clothes and to transform them and upcycle them. I realized that I was making a lot of things and I felt like my things were sort of unique, just like the way that I made them or what I was making them out of. And I saw a gap in the market. I don't know, I just thought people might be interested in the kind of products that I had to offer. I was also making a lot of stuff that I couldn't all keep for myself. <laughs> so that's how I started my own brand called Toto Street. And that's just where I make jewelry, gifts and accessories out of things that I find, things that I've upcycled. And I sell those online on Instagram and on Facebook under the name Toto Street. And I also go to markets. My mom is my biggest supporter. She's always been there for me, encouraging me to do what I do. She helps me in whatever way that she can. You are not too far behind. Though you think you are, I don't think you are. I often doubt what I can do. I think that um, you just have to press on and just do your best and leave the rest. She likes taking pictures of the things that I make. She sends it to all of my aunts and my cousins for them to see what I'm doing. She's just been really supportive, really great. And I don't think I could have made it as far as I have with my brand, with my business, even applying to this competition without her. So to you, mom, when you're seeing this, uh, I just wanted to say thank you for always supporting me, for always encouraging me to go after what I want to do, just encouraging me to live my dream. You really um, inspire me. All right, so here's a little behind the scenes of how this competition goes. I sent out a call for contestants and so many of you applied from all over the world. My original goal was to have five contestants and that's it, but I could not choose. There were just so many, so I had to up it to nine contestants. Even though we're from all over the world, we all met one day on Google Meet. That was the most fun. Got to meet everybody, chit chat, and then the real work started. Please do not start your upcycle until you get the go. 
after meeting them, we kicked off the competition on a Sunday and they had to be finished by that next Saturday. For me, seeing all of their creations all in one day on that Saturday had me just like, oh, this is gonna be good. Hi, Tony. Are you ready to start the ultimate upcycle challenge? For my soul, yes. Yes, Angelina, I'm so excited to be on this show. I'm so glad to be picked. I'm so ready to start. Let's go. All right, so what are you using to do your upcycle piece? I wasn't sure what exactly I would need, so I may have collected a lot of jeans. <laughs> I have six different sort of denim items, one jean skirt that I definitely want to use. That's a lot of material. It is a lot of material. That's why I'm quite excited to have it. And I have two sort of similar shorts in this color, very light sort of blue. These blue jeans, they're long blue jeans. These were my mom's and I will probably use these because I really like the color. I think it's a very deep sort of blue. If there are any other things that I need like thread or zippers and things like that, I go to a local haberdashery. Can you tell us what is a haberdashery for Americans who have no idea? A haberdashery is sort of like a store to get all of your sewing supplies. Um, they have fabrics, they have needles, any fancy things like lace, applique, buttons, stuffing if you want to make toys and things. Anything you can think of, um, sort of like creatively, they have that. All right, so what are you thinking about making these pieces, the jeans, into? I was thinking, what would I like to have that's um, a denim piece? that I don't already have or that not a lot of people sort of have. You always see sort of people have funky shorts or funky jeans or funky jackets. And I was like, you don't really see sort of a crew neck sweatshirt. Oh, nice. And I was like, I like sweatshirts. I think it'd be really cool in denim. Let me see if I can actually make this. So that's my plan. That's awesome. I like just something different, something I haven't seen before. So I think everybody's going to be really excited to see that. So what inspired that idea? My own closet. I wear that a lot in winter, so I can really use some more. And I also just think it's original. I haven't seen very many. So you're going for the shock and awe, like you're going for the, oh, wow, I haven't seen that before. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now we're getting to the point where you're going to get like your start time. And I know like it's exciting. It's a little bit nerve wracking, but what do you hope to accomplish by Wednesday? I am hoping that I would have finished the main bodice. So the front, maybe the back, and then also done a lot of the patchwork because that will take the longest. So hopefully I've finished, if not all, most of the patchwork. Yeah. Anything else that I do, bonus. Yeah, yeah. Patchwork can take a bit of a long time. I applaud you. You submitted an amazing patchwork skirt um, in order to apply for Next Top Upcycler. And um, I absolutely loved it. So did that skirt take you a long time? It definitely did. And there was a time when I just wanted to give up. <laughs> it was just taking too long. So I, I took a break from the project for quite a while. And then I came back and it turned out amazing. So I'm yes. glad that I finally finished it. All right. Are you ready to start? I'm so ready. Let's go. Can we do it? All right. On your mark, get set, go. <laughs> so I just got to go ahead to start my project and I had too much nervous energy, so I could kind of just ran around for a bit, but now I've calmed down a bit and I'm ready to start. So I think I'm going to start with the patcher because that'll probably take the longest. Take my hand, we'll make it somehow, we can't miss out. Day two of Next Top Upcycler and I'm thinking I'm just going to deconstruct all of my garments. I just brought my seam ripping outside. Yay, first pocket done. I should probably wash these before I use them. Move on to the next one. I'm gonna go ahead and seam rip a waistband next, very easy. So we've got the waistband that's free and the skirt. 
I'm thinking I'll use this at the bottom of the switch, sort of. Okay, so we have the waistband casing and a really thick piece of elastic. I plan to cut it sort of here so that I can use this as the entrance tip, sort of like a side pocket on the front of the sweatshirt. And then I'm thinking I'll use the waistband as maybe the waistband of the sweatshirt. So next I'm planning to cut off the legs just to use as the sleeves for my sweatshirt. So I went ahead and pinned all along the slit of the skirt so I can sew it closed. And then it'll just be one continuous tube that I can use as the main bodice piece. Let the patchwork continue. It's the end of the day and I'm feeling pretty tired. Hi, welcome to day three of the upcycle challenge. I'm just gonna continue with this patchwork. There's fabric all over the floor from patchworking, but that's just the nature of it. Gotta continue with this awesome patchwork. It's coming along quite well. Hopefully I'll be able to finish that today and then I'll move on to working on the sleeves. Day four, Almost done with this patchwork behind me. First little hiccup, broke my needle and managed to stab myself at the same time. Mm. Day four of this challenge is going great. So to anyone who hasn't started sewing because they don't know how to use a sewing machine, clearly I don't know how to use mine properly either. Well, through the pain, blood, sweat and tears. I've had blood, I've had sweat. I'm just waiting for some tears. After four days of patchworking, it's finally done. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press this and then I'll attach it to the back of the bodice. Patchworking, eh? All right, Tony, how are you doing on your projects? I wanna see, let's see what's going on. So I've sort of cut off the legs of the jeans. Okay. For the sleeves, we can prepare for the sleeves. And then sort of removed the side seam here for the arms. So that was like a part, an arm hole. And I sewed up the top. So it's just like a little, I haven't done very much to this. Just seam ripped the waistband off, cut sort of a neck line, seam ripped the sides. What I've mostly been working on is this patchwork. And it's been taking me forever. But I finally finished it. I saw that on Instagram. It looks amazing. So, how, like the process so far, how are you feeling? It's been all right. After the first day, I was sort of feeling okay. And then the second day, I was like, oh no, I'm working way too slowly. I need to speed up. I need to start doing things. <laughs> I felt like I was, wasn't pacing myself like well. I was too relaxed about it. So then okay. when I got to the third day, I was like, okay, I need to sit down. I need to work. <laughs> so I got a lot done. <laughs> okay. So what do you have left to do to get to the end, to get to Saturday? A lot. <laughs> um, I still need to attach that patchwork to the back, do the pocket, attach the sleeves, and then all of sort of the cuffs and the bottom of the sweatshirt and the neckline, I still need to do all of that. And then I'm thinking of a few other details that could be quite interesting. Yeah, I'm everything. excited to see it. I, I love, love, love the direction that it's going so far. I really like your patchwork. I can tell that that's a quite a while. So I'm excited to see how you use it. Okay, so let's talk about this just for a moment. I don't know if you noticed, but you're the youngest person in the competition. Okay. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I noticed. Okay. So does that intimidate you or does that like give you an edge? What do you think? When I first found out the other contestants, I obviously stalked them a little bit on social media just to see the sorts of things that they make. I don't know. They, they had a lot more experience than me. But at the end of the day, the public's going to vote. So it all depends on what they like. So I'm just trying to create a piece that's true to me, something that I would wear and that's interesting and out of the box and inventive. Yes. It's anybody's game. What do you want young people to know about upcycling? Since you're the representative, we're making you the representative <laughs> of young people, people on Next Stop Upcycling. So what should they know about upcycling? You don't need to have a lot of experience to get started. You just need to have an interest, really. So 
if you see something you like and you want to change it up a little bit, go for it. And you probably will mess up a few things, but there's always a way to fix it. So just don't be scared to start. Super excited um, to see what you do. Now we're going to take a little turn and we're going to look at your space. Welcome to my studio. It's really just my room. I have this tiny little desk. So I just propped up some cupboard doors that we had left over from when we were renovating. So this is my sewing machine. As you can see, it's a single one of me. Unfortunately, uh, two days ago she broke down, so I'm looking for a new sewing machine. And that's not the bottom. Yeah, no, the top gear. Yeah, the top gear. Yeah. This anyway. And here's my new sewing machine. It's a Brother PX200, and I also got it second hand. It has a lot more functions than the Singer did, and I'm just really excited to have it and to start working with it. Just normally I have my laptop on this side, which I listen to music on while I'm working, for the supplies back there. I recently made this. Oh, yeah, so my table. I have a little pull out thing here. Yeah, I've got my jean supply. I don't only really keep anything that I'm working on. So, yeah, this is normally where I sew. I have a tripod for recording and things. I've got my wall organizer just so that I could utilize all the space on my table. So, I just keep like my scissors, some knitting needles, I have some notes. In here, I keep all of my extra threads and things. It's just a glasses case. I've got my pin cushion, tape measure, rulers, anything I'll need. This is just my wardrobe, but I use it to keep a lot of my scrap fabrics and things. So all of these bags at the bottom, and then also in these boxes up here, I've got scrap fabric. All right, so I really enjoy seeing your space. I Like I said, I love that you are very like um, inventive as far as like your table and your wall hanging and everything like that. I absolutely love that because like when I first started and I just, I really, really want people to know this. Like when you first start out or at whatever stage you are, like use what you have. It's not, you know, everybody's trying to get this and I'm me included this Instagram look um, <laughs> to shoot photos and, you know, stuff like that. But really honestly, it's all about what comes out of the space not what the space is and i'm super excited about seeing your big reveal your final look reveal yeah. on saturday this is as far as i got last night i just sewed on the sleeves i had to do it two times or three times before I was happy with it but now the fit seems to be okay. There's still a lot to be done. I need to finish all of the edges, put cuffs on the sleeves, put sort of a waistband on the bottom here, finish up the neckline and then do all of the finishings. I feel in the throat. So on my patchwork on the back which will cover sort of the faded look from where I removed the pockets and I need to decide what sort of design I'm going to do on the front. I have a lot of conflicting ideas and I'm trying to mash it all together to see what works and I'm just very confused and I don't know what it's going to look like in the end anymore and it's stressing me out because I'm not sure I'm going to finish on time and I need to work very fast so we'll see what happens sort of pin the patchwork on and I'm going to sew it down I'm not sure I'm just going to get to the sewing machine and figure it out but while I have this on I do want to adjust the neckline I think it should come down a little bit more in the front. Maybe until here. Pretty thick with my scissors I'm struggling. I've just sewn the top edge at this side. So I think I'm gonna have to add in more fabric. I'm thinking that should be enough. I might just put sort of a decorative stitch between these two just to join them a little bit better. But other than that, it seems alright. Now I'm just going to work on the cuffs for the sleeves and I'm going to use the old waistband of the skirt to do this. So now that we've got that, now I'm just going to sew it onto the end of the sleeve here. And you'll see that it'll slightly cinch in. Oh, I'm just busy sewing and I have a little buddy with me. This is Artie. Say hello, Artie. Look. Good boy. 
Now I'm working on the pockets. So I'm just gonna remove these rivets. There we go. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out the pocket and the material. And here's the pocket. I chose this pocket because it's deep enough to fit a phone. Now I just need to attach this to the pocket. This section is definitely too long. Do it again. So I just want to edit the neckline a bit. So I'm just going to take apart the waistband of the jeans that I used to use as bias tape for the neck. It's 1am and I'm still sewing. <laughs> Trying to be as quiet as possible so I don't wake everybody up. I'm just going to go ahead and make a waistband out of this leftover fabric instead of cutting up a new pair of jeans. So I went ahead and sewed up the sides. I already sewed the one end, so I'm just going to sew the other end down. I don't have to cut it. It's 2 a.m. and I'm ready now, just going to bed. And you sort of put some time down that I need to do while picking them out. Morning. Then measure it around my wrist to see how tight I want the cuffs to be. I can go a bit tighter actually. Yeah, I think that's okay. Yeah, that's it. Back to the pocket. Didn't have zip the zip all the way to the top, but it's fine. Managed to open it still. Beautiful technique works. So I'm just gonna finish this edge off. Okay, so this will be where I attach the new button. So I've been forced to take a two hour break because of load shedding, which is a scheduled power cut. Yay. So I'm just attaching the pocket to the side of the sweatshirt. Now comes the time that I've been dreading the whole day, cutting the whole for the pocket to slide through so I can finish up this upcycle. I think I've done it. Okay, now I just need to sew everything down and we should be all good. Oh, not too bad. How does it look on the inside? So I'm just hand stitching along this end since my machine can't reach it. I'm using just a regular back stitch. And yeah, it's all done. The button just broke because I was trying to attach it, probably because the back end was skew. I have to come up with a new plan for the button because I don't want to have to take off another button off another pair of jeans. So, this is the quick fix we came up with. We ended up having to use a screw and a piece of aluminium as a sort of a washer and we just drilled a hole into the back of the button and now it's all good it's pretty tight works pretty well it's very sturdy so at least that happened i i did it it's done i'm so excited one more day let's go it's officially the last day and i'm just putting some finishing touches to my garment i kind of like how it looks now already just like very simple but clean and polished and that's very much my vibe so I'm tempted to leave it like this looks very simple from the front and then you turn it to the back and it's like oh bam look at that awesome patchwork you know I should probably finish up the neck and I'm just gonna do an overlock stitch on that just to seal everything in and then I'll go ahead and press the bar we'll see so let me finish up the neck I think in this case less is more and I'm just gonna keep it as is. All right, so Tony definitely had some obstacles to overcome, but I think the youngest person in this competition has a thing or two to teach us about perseverance. So pay attention and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss one episode. Voting opens April 24th at BlueprintDIY.com. So let's see how she did. Hi. Hello. <laughs> so how are you feeling, Miss Tony? I'm excited. I'm <laughs> glad that I finished and I managed to make like something awesome. Yeah. I am so happy for you, so proud of you. From the time I talked to you on Wednesday, what have the last few days been like for you? I think the last few days have been the most difficult because I was stressed that I wasn't going to finish. Mm -hmm. And also just deciding how I was gonna finish off the piece 
it was very stressful because I had a lot of extras that I could have added. But also then you think, is it too much? Or if I don't add it, is it too little? And I didn't want to over-design. Yeah. So I just had to trust my gut and stick with what I had planned. So are you ready to show it off to the world? I'm ready. <laughs> All right. So we will see Tony's <laughs> final look in three, two, one. Be plain sweatshirt from the front, you've got sort of um, an elasticated waist and you've got an elasticated cuff here at the arms, mm -hmm. you've got this sort of rounded neckline and then also you've got a pocket here, this is actually a pocket. I took the zipper flap and then I made it into a pocket. So oh, nice. you've got the buckles and you've got the zip and it's a functional pocket. Yeah. Ah, I it's love actually that. Cool you've got a phone. And then, yeah, you just do it up. And it just looks like a zipper fly. I tried to incorporate as much of the original jeans as possible. So you could definitely tell that it was made of jeans. Yeah. So from the front, it kind of looks simple, but then you turn to the back and you have this awesome patchwork going on. Oh, that is so nice. I love how you incorporated it. Yeah. Which I didn't even do that. You were talking about like adding it as pockets, but I really like it as the whole uh, back uh, piece. Yeah, just the panel at the back. Yes. Yeah. And the design, once again, I told you this before, but the design of that is absolutely beautiful. I worked very hard on it, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I feel like the patchwork has become like my signature sort of look. So for anything that I create, I have some sort of a patchwork. Um, so that's what I'm gonna sort of use as my Toto Street aesthetic. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. So we've helped you find your whole aesthetic, your whole vibe. <laughs> I'm really glad that it turned out the way that I envisioned it. I really wanted to make something that I had never seen before and that like a lot of people haven't thought about. It worked out. I had a few problems with the fit initially because you know denim is not really as stretchy as like a cotton or something yeah but it was a really small sort of thing to overcome and once i figured out how the material worked for like a sweatshirt it came together were there any moments where um you put things on wrong you had to take them apart put them back on again or did it just go kind of together seamlessly every single element on here i had to re-sew more than once except for the waistband that just happened to go on, but the cuffs, the neckline, once, twice, three times, yeah. So you had to fight through it. I did. Yeah. <laughs> so was it worth it? Definitely. I think it's a really awesome piece, and I'm so glad to have it in my wardrobe now, and also to show everybody else what denim can create. Yeah. It's not just jeans or shorts or jackets. It can also be a sweatshirt <laughs> and earrings. I'm also wearing my little earrings today. <laughs> yeah, so denim can be really anything. That's that's your message. Denim can be anything. <laughs> Why should people vote for Tony to be the next top upcycler? I believe that I should be the next top upcycler because I just really want to show that you don't need a lot to get started. You don't need to have experience or formal training. You just need to have a passion for what you're doing and then go after your visions and your dreams. So let me know what you think in the comments. Are you team Tony? I'm gonna be honest, when she first said that she was trying to create a sweatshirt out of old jeans, I was like, how? Like, how is she gonna do this? But that's exactly what she did. And that patchwork on the back is just, it's like a beautiful stained glass window. It's so intricate and the detail is just spot on. Absolutely love it. And if you are loving these Next Top Upcycle episodes, definitely share these on your socials so people will know to come and vote for Tony, come and vote for Jess and all the other contestants on April 24th. And all the t-shirts I've worn in this episode are in the merch shelf below. You can purchase those to support Next Top Upcycle. And if you're interested in creating your own upcycles, I have plenty of tutorials 
tutorials right here for you, all the way from beginner to advanced. So click on one of those and I'll see you next week, Saturday at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time for a new premiere of Next Stop Upcycler. All right, bye! bye.